hi just wanted to take an, another opportunity to speak to you since uh, we kind of have some time before I hit bed um, I've been telling a lot of people that uh, scriptures predominantly especially when it comes to the uh, Old Testament prophets, uh, a lot of them are actually based on poetry and apocalyptic language, in other words, language which are flowery, poetic, as well as um, the fact that uh, they use pictures to describe something. Uh, and uh, if you actually read uh, Isaiah 14, uh, you will read about how uh, there is this cherub by the name of Lucifer, and that uh, what happened was that he uh, was uh, anointed of all uh, of all glory, and then uh, it, it says that he fell. And what happens is that uh, many people would then deem Lucifer as Satan. Uh, as I've done in other videos, I've actually mentioned the fact that uh, when you read chapter 4, or rather chapter 14, uh, you will find that verse actually in Hyde, Pastor Derek, uh, in verse 12, uh, you will read about Lucifer, you will read about the Morning Star, you will read about how this supposedly angel fell. Um, but the problem with many people is that when they read something like this, they don't read the whole chapter. They don't read the whole uh, picture of the the whole passage. And when you read chapter four, uh, verse four of the same chapter in Isaiah fourteen, you realize that the whole thing there, the whole of chapter fourteen, is a taunt against the king of Babylon, or a, a taunt against the king of Babylon, and. The Lucifer's, therefore, uh, which Isaiah was speaking about, was actually the king of Babylon. And it speaks about how the king of Babylon, who is Nebuchadnezzar, he went mad, and then he behaved like an animal. So the whole chapter there is about the poetic narration of Daniel chapter 4, of how King Nebuchadnezzar, because of his pride, because of his arrogance, uh, he fell. And as because he, he fell uh, and into madness, uh, he behaved like an animal. He had, uh, Daniel 4 talks about how he ate grass and he had skins of scales and, and that you know he had nails and that became claws. Isaiah 14 was all about that. It is not about the fall of an angel. So, when many people read Ezekiel 28, they also don't realize that the same narrative is actually issued by Ezekiel. Ezekiel spoke about the king of Tyre, and uh, what happens is that uh, he spoke about the king of Sidon. Uh, these are the two enemies of Israel during Isaiah's days as well. So, Isaiah speaks about them in Isaiah 24. See? But when you speak to someone uh, about Ezekiel 28, they will come and tell you this is the place where Satan fell. And as a result, what happened was that Isaiah 28 is about this cherub, which was in the Garden of Eden. He was walking on the uh, mountains of the Lord and all that, and he was filled with all sorts of jewelry, and he fell. Now, let me ask you one very interesting question. What was the greatest thing that God created in Eden? What was the greatest thing that God created in Eden? The answer is simple. Adam. So in other words, when Ezekiel was talking about this cherub who was so beautiful, anointed and walked onto the mountain of the Lord, everything there is about Adam. In other words, when Ezekiel was speaking about the king of Tyre, he is actually saying the king of Tyre is given everything, just like Adam. The king of Tyre is beautiful, is powerful, like the first Adam. 
it has nothing to do with the fact that he is a spiritual being called Satan. Because Isaiah 24, or 23 or 24, describes about how rebellious this king is and eventually how he actually fell. This is the way the ancient Jews speak and communicate to the people. Because you know why? Uh, assuming I'm, I'm a preacher and that uh, when I speak to you, uh, I even wanted it to be exciting, I would have a choir with me, I would have slides presentation, I would have special effects in my slides. And when I speak to you, I would, uh, I would speak to you through a huge microphone. I probably have a beautiful hall uh, with special effects if I wanted to emphasize on certain things. But the problem with the prophets of the old is that they don't have such things. So in order to capture you, in order to continue speaking to you, in order to uh, capture your attention, in order to make things interesting, this is the kind of language they use. This is called apocalyptic language. In other words, language uh, which basically carries special effects. So they elaborate on something and they conjure up something and they paint pictures with uh, their words. But unfortunately, we don't understand this culture, which is ancient, which is archaic, and which is also Jewish. So we think they have been really literal. Sadly, this only creates superstition. So I hope, again, the small little segments that we do uh, helps you to understand what's going on and helps you to understand uh, why we tell you that uh, Satan is actually a, a narrative tool. It, it is compulsory for him to exist for the sake of the story or for the sake of the narrative. But he's not a demonic being. He's a, cre he's a creature of language. He's a creature of, uh, of uh, narrative. He's a creature of uh, literature, so to say. So I hope that, that helps you to understand at least who the king of Tyre is. Uh, it could very well be Hiram. Uh, he was mentioned as uh, the king of Tyre in, in uh, David's reign. So that may be him. Okay, guys, uh, please remove this crazy superstition that has been taught to you. <laughs>